The first thing that we might want to do in solving this question is decide in which direction each block is accelerating. And that is going to be based upon the masses. Block 1 has a mass of 1.3 kilograms and block 2, 2.8 kilograms. Of course, because block 2 is more massive, it's going to sort of win this tug of war between the blocks. So in other words, block 2 is going to be accelerating downward. We can label that A, whereas block 1, which is less massive, is going to be tugged upward. We can label its acceleration as A, but pointing up. Next, we'll draw a free body diagram showing forces acting on each block. We'll start with M1. Of course, we know that there is a gravitational force pulling block 1 downward. We can label that M1 times G. And then we have this upward tension that we will label T. Notice we're drawing that tension a little bit bigger than the gravitational force because block one is accelerating upward. So there has to be an unbalanced force pointing in the upward direction. We move over to block two. We will draw a similar looking free body di diagram, except this time the gravitational force on M2 will be larger than the tension force because as stated earlier, block two is accelerating downward. So there has to be an unbalanced force pointing downward acting on block two. We next turn to Newton's second law and apply it to both blocks. For block one, we will say the net force is equal to the mass of block one times its acceleration. Now, remember, block one is accelerating in this direction upward. So we will arbitrarily call that direction positive the opposite direction can be negative. And therefore, we have positive tension minus that gravitational force. And then this is equal to m1 times a. We'll leave that for now, and we'll turn over to the other block. Same idea. We'll say that the f net is equal to m2 times a. Recall that the acceleration acting on block 2 is pointing in this direction, so we will arbitrarily call the downward direction positive and the upward direction negative. And therefore, we have the following. We have the positive m2g minus the tension. And then that's going to equal m2 multiplied by a. Now we have a system of two equations with two unknowns. Recall that we do not know the tension that is acting in that cord or in that rope, nor do we know the acceleration. Those are the two things we're trying to look for. And there's sort of a neat algebraic trick that we can do in this situation. And to illustrate that trick, why don't we go ahead and rewrite the two equations so that they're sort of stacked on top of each other. So here are those two equations stacked one on top of the other. And what we'll do is we'll actually add them together. And this is kind of a neat trick in this question, because if you notice carefully, when you add the positive tension to the negative tension, those will go to zero. Essentially, they'll cancel out. So those would be eliminated. And then when we continue to add, we'll have this positive M2G minus that M1G. And then on the other side, when we're adding this to this, these are not like terms. So we'd have to write M1 times A plus M2 times A. Now, this is neat because we are trying to find acceleration, and that appears as a greatest common factor on the right-hand side. We can actually factor out that acceleration. That would leave us with the sum of the masses. And then we can divide each side of the equation by the sum of the masses. And what's really nice there, of course, is they'll cancel out on the right-hand side and then on the left hand side, we have our expression for the acceleration. Let's just go ahead and tidy it up. And there it is. And you can make your life even easier by noticing that G appears as a greatest common factor in the numerator. So let's go ahead and factor that out. And this is the final form. And now we can just plug everything in. We know the value of G, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the masses have been given. So let's plug those in. And the masses have been plugged in for a moment. We'll drop the units just to simplify the computations. In the numerator, 2.8 minus 1.3, we've got 1.5. And then in the denominator, when we add those masses together, we get 4.1. And when you finish simplifying this, you should get approximately 3.6. This would now be in meters per second squared. That is the correct answer for the acceleration of each block. Notice the accelerations are equal because the blocks are connected by a single rope. So they are accelerating in tandem. They both have the same acceleration value. In part B, we are asked to find the tension. So let's go back to one of our equations that had tension in it. 
it wouldn't matter which one because the tension value is the same throughout. Perhaps we can sort of arbitrarily select this first equation from earlier in our elimination process. So let's grab this equation. And we can go ahead and just solve it for the tension. You can add m1g to both sides of the equation. And then on the right hand side you can even factor out the m1. So it's going to basically just be m1 multiplied by a plus g. We've already found the value of a, the other values are given. So let's plug them in. And when you add the values in parentheses and then multiply by the mass, you should get a tension of approximately 17 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part B.